Okay, so now that you've done the proof of the law of sines, you should have the formula for it. Now, I wanted to give you both versions of it because it really doesn't matter if you put the sides on the bottom or the sides on the top as long as they are all written the same way, okay? Um, basically, what it is is a proportion statement, right? Um, if you take a triangle, right triangle, otherwise any other kind of triangle, doesn't matter. If you take the sine of an angle and you divide it by its corresponding side, or if you use the other version, if you use this version instead, if you take a side of a triangle and divide it by the sine of its corresponding angle, you're going to get three equal fractions. That's what a proportion statement is. It's equal fractions at that point. Um, it's actually pretty cool that you can divide it that way and they're going to end up all being the same thing. Um, the really neat part about it is it lets us solve for missing pieces of triangles that we would not have been able to otherwise because, um, you know, they're not right triangles. So we're talking about like Pythagorean theorem and, and doing the basic sine, cosine and, and stuff like that that you've done with right triangles. This will actually let us do this for any triangle because of this proportion. Okay. So we're going to be solving for unknown sides and angles. Okay. The only rule with the law of signs, and you need to get this down, you need to highlight it, put a star by it, put a box on it, ingrain it on your brain. Okay. In order to use the law of signs, you have to have one angle and its corresponding side. Okay. So just as a quick reminder, what that means, um, when we were writing the triangles and we were actually like putting the sides and the angle angles on there as far as the letters, right? Angles are written with capital letters and it doesn't matter what the capital letters are. It could be R, S, T, X, Y, Z, A, B, C, whatever it is. Okay. Little R, little S goes here, little T goes here. Okay. One angle and its corresponding side. If you don't have that, then you cannot use law of signs, period. Okay, we're going to learn something that we can use later, like Friday. Um, but for right now, again, you must use law of signs and you have to have that corresponding piece. Okay, so let's actually start using it. Again, it's not hard. Most of it goes in the calculator. It's just you have to know how to set it up. Okay, so I have a right triangle or not, sorry, a non-right triangle. And again, I know I'm going kind of fast. Um, pause the video, write the notes down, replay, rewind, whatever you need to do, it's fine. I'm just trying to keep the video about 10 minutes, no more. So just take your time, write your notes down, you'll be good. Okay, so we're gonna set up a proportion to solve for C, a proportion being the actual formula, okay? Now take a look, I have a corresponding angle and side. Now, I don't need to write all three fractions down. Okay, and again, it also doesn't matter what the letters are. So basically, if I do the angle on top, then I'm going to do the sine of B over B equals the sine of big C, because that's the one I want to go with, over little c. And it's just a plug and chug. So I need to do the sine of 98 degrees divided by 17.1. And that's going to be equal to the sine of 54 degrees divided by whatever side C's measure is, and that's what we're going to use to solve. We're going to cross multiply. Now, here's the thing. I want you to do this on your paper first as far as the setup, and I want you to solve for C first so that you can put the whole thing in the calculator at one shot, okay? If you don't, you may end up having rounding errors, okay? So when I say solve for C first, well, how do you solve a proportion? You cross multiply, right? Okay, so this is going to be C, little c, times the sine of 98 equals 17.1. I always put the side in the front so I don't screw up because I know my calculator, it's going to give me parentheses around the angle, right? So times the sine of 54 degrees. All right, so we have to be in degree mode, make sure. And then to get C by itself, I have to divide not by 98, but by the sine of 98. That is an actual... Uh, piece in and of itself. Remember, that's a, some value that's less than one. So what I want you to put in the calculator, use your stacked fraction button and put that whole thing in the calculator at one time. Okay. And again, that will keep you from having round off errors. Okay. 
so sine of 98. All right, so I don't have my calculator with me, so I'm going to have to do this the long way with the one on my phone. So give me a second. Let's make sure our answers are right. Okay, so I have... Should be 13.97 is what I'm getting. So little c equals 13.97. Now we haven't talked about proportion um, as far as like the sides of your triangle and stuff, but let's see if that seems reasonable, okay? So I have an angle that is 98 degrees. That's, that's a pretty good size angle. And it goes with a side that is 17.1. I have an angle that's smaller than the 98. So I know my other side also has to be smaller, right? Because it has to be in proportion to the angle. So 13.97 seems like a reasonable answer. So hopefully that's what you got as well. Like I said, I'm having to do this in the calculator on my phone. Hopefully you were able to put it out as a fraction and, and set it up. Okay, so this is the other reason I want you to solve for C first because that's solving for a side. Okay, now we have to solve for an angle. You have to be able to do both. So we are going to solve for angle, oop, put on the wrong one. We are going to solve for, I have to actually fix this, ignore that. All right, so let's see. We're going to solve for angle C. So I'm going to make this side 12. Okay, so proportional setup, I have an angle and a side that correspond. Pen's being weird. Okay, so that means that the sine of 73 degrees has to go over 16, or again, 16 over sine 73, it really does not matter. Okay, and that has to equal the sine of big C divided by 12. Okay, so stick with me because we're gonna do the steps. This is what I want you to show on your paper and then you put the final statement into the calculator. So we're gonna cross multiply first. Same as ever because it's a proportion, that's what we do. So 12 sine 73 equals 16 times the sine of C. Now remember C is what we're working backwards for. So remember when we solved all those equations, all those trig equations. Okay, so in order to get C by itself, I first have to divide by 16. Okay, so that's going to get me 12 sine 73 degrees divided by 16 equals the sine of C. Well, we already know how to get rid of sine to get C by itself. We did this when we were solving. Okay, the Inverse of sine is what's used to get rid of sine. So if you do sine inverse on both sides, like you're supposed to, and by the way, it needs to go in front of the entire thing. So when you do this and you put it in your calculator, sine inverse, and then hit the fraction button, okay? Because that whole thing is what you're taking the sine inverse of. That's going to equal C, so whatever C is. So again, give me a minute because I got to do this on my phone calculator to see if I can get it to work. Okay, so. All right, that's not going to work. Let's see. Hmm, not getting it. Okay, so give me a minute. I'm going to have to pull a bigger calculator to see if I can do it. Oh boy, this is going to be fun. All right, um, hopefully this will work. Just bear with me. Um, okay, sign inverse. Uh, Hmm. 
Hmm. Oh, okay. Ah, uh, this is going to be fun. <laughs> Okay. Ah, now I know why I'm in radian measures, which I should not be. Okay. Why is it giving me a syntax error? Oh, I need another set of parentheses. Oop. Ah, 45.8. Finally, just took a little finagling with the calculator. 45.8. Thank you for your patience, by the way. And again, let's see if it makes sense in this case. 45.8 degrees. Um, I have an angle of 73 degrees that goes with a side of 16. If I have a side of 12, that means it obviously has to be smaller than 73. So that does seem like a reasonable answer, 45.8. Again, you can also prove it to yourself by doing sine 73 divided by 16, and then separately sine of 45.8 divided by 12. And you should come up with really, really close, again, with round off errors, to the same exact measure. Okay. So again, thank you for your patience. I will see you on Monday. Um, I will have another short video tomorrow on applied law of signs, basically just working you through how to draw uh, triangles so you know where your pieces are going to fit. I will see you later.